but they'll have two Christmas Day games mm. is what they'll have on deck. Obviously, that used to be the NBA's day. Right. The NFL not just putting a game on Christmas Day. They're putting dose games on Christmas Day. And Christmas Day falls on a Wednesday this year. So, yeah, that'll be smack dab in the middle of the week, hump day for Christmas Day. But, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, shoot. Obviously, they're still going to have a Monday night game on the 23rd, and then they're going to have two Christmas Day games. I mean, it's going to be a jam-packed day of sports. I mean, I know I'll be watching a ton of NBA, but of course I'm going to have the NFL games on the iPad for sure. And I mean, shoot, even a month before that, we got the Thanksgiving Day games. NFL is taking over. And if, I mean, that, that's I mean, taking all. over. What am I talking about? They have say. taken over. The NFL's not relinquishing control of what they have. What's theirs is theirs at this point. And what's not theirs, more. they're coming for it. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt about it. Watch out, Caitlin Clark. The NFL might be <laughs> the NFL might be playing on the Final Four day. They might just have you know a very very early. They might have a weak negative zero game. You know, just to try to combat some of that stuff. Nonetheless, but all right. Um, so I don't know why people make such a big deal about this. The Packers have been selected by the NFL over the Browns to face the Eagles uh, in Brazil on September sixth. I don't really look. I'm a Browns fan. That okay, everyone's like, you know, Kenner, what do you think about that? I don't think anything about it. I don't really care. Look, I don't care where the game is played. I don't know why we care about, like, everyone has made such a big deal about the possibility of Cleveland playing the Eagles. I know it would be like a Friday game. Yeah. Uh, as far as that's concerned, I mean, that's a little different. I, I completely get that. But at the same time, I'm tuning in for the football aspect of it. I'm not tuning in for where the game is being played at. I think that this impacts Brazil. I don't know why it's being talked about so much today. Of course, I have the response. I have the power to not talk about it. Here I am talking about it. But yeah, Kev. So the Browns will not open up the season on a Friday night on September sixth against uh, the the Eagles in Brazil. That will go to Mr. Jordan Love and the Packers. Yeah, if I'm a if I'm a Browns fan because I know they were rumored. I know like one of their players had mentioned something about it on social media a couple of weeks ago. If I'm a Browns player, if I'm a Browns coach, and if I'm a Browns fan, I'm happy. I want to be on Sunday. Like, I want to be, you know, the cliche thing, the creature of a habit. You know, NFL does not play on Fridays until they started playing games on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And now they have this Friday game. So, like, slowly but surely, like we just talked about, the NFL is coming for what is everybody else's. You know, obviously they play Saturday games now uh, towards the back end of the college football season. They've always played Monday night games. They've always played Sunday night games. But now they got the Thursday nights. So, like, they're going to have a monopoly on the pro situation in the fall. So this is just further and further of them taking over. But, like, hey, man, I, I hate when the Steelers play on Thursday night football. One, I don't like Thursday night football. I can't remember the last good Thursday night football game there's been, like a super highly entertaining game. I can't remember the last one it was. I'm sure our folks in the chat can remind me of that. But like, I, I like my team playing on the day that they're supposed to play. Like, And they want to play on Sundays. That's when I want them to play. And that's where you get your best football. Kenner and Kev's show, 1410 ESPN Radio, Chatterbox Sports, off and rolling here on a Wednesday. Uh, what's trending? Continuing to go down the list, let's go to the association. Giant, uh, Giants, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, I'm sorry, has avoided damage to his left Achilles tendon and his return to play is based on treatment and rehab response to his strained calf. Uh, I know when we utter the words uh, strained calf, I know that you know gives Bengals fans a little PTSD. That's what uh, really kind of derailed the season for the Bengals as Joe Burrow was trying to battle his way through that before ultimately facing another season an ending injury when it was all said and done but a strained calf it's not something that keeps you from being able to walk but it does keep you from being able to play at a high level ask the Bengals fans how that impacted their season not good news at all you never want this type of injury regardless but the timing cannot be worse especially the Bucks go as he goes uh, no doubt about it absolutely this is the worst thing that well not the worst but this is top five worst things that could happen to the Bucks with their best player dealing with a calf strain, which he's been dealing with since the All-Star break, and he's been very limited on, you know, the road games that they play. And shoot, let's be real, man, they played below 500 basketball. Like, there was a point after the All-Star break where they had rattled off, like, seven in a row, and, like, looks like they had righted the ship, but they have derailed and took a step back. I mean, they're basically uh, a game away from playing in the Playing. And then Dame with a, a back issue, like this is not how you want to be entering the playoffs where a team that they could potentially be facing in the Miami Heat are starting to come into form. So this is could be a back-to-back -back year that the Bucks are going out in the first round in the playoffs. It's Ken and Kev Show, fourteen ten ESPN Radio. Coming up, or coming next up, I should say on the on on the list. It's official. Calipari now officially the head coach 
of Arkansas. Arkansas. And the thing that's interesting about this, I'm seeing a lot of Kentucky fans, you know, have said, good, you know, like at the end of the day, Calipari is a legendary coach. I still think he's the biggest, one of the biggest names, if not the biggest name in college basketball. I just don't think, even though things aren't trending well right now, or wasn't trending well right now for Kentucky, you don't just boot a coach like that out. I think you're flirting with disaster when you think that even though it is Kentucky, there's only a, there's less than a handful of quality coaches that actually match the intensity of what Kentucky basketball is. So I'm not a fan of the idea. I know they didn't boot him. He ultimately left, mm-hmm. but he ultimately left because of the you know internal conflict between him and the university itself, it seems. But there's a quote that came out today that he was talking about. He's excited about Arkansas because, you know, NIL, you know, he's ready for their NIL and he won't have to go out and do it. <laughs> and the thing is, though, like, he's right. That's Kentucky. Why is Calipari out campaigning for NIL dollars? Like, and I don't mean, like, oh, assisting collectives in basically going out there to fundraise to get these types of things. He was responsible for coming up with these funds himself. And that's wild to me, considering it is Kentucky basketball. Uh, Calipari should never have to leave a Kentucky to go to an Arkansas and then talk about how it's a better situation over there for NIL. Here's the deal. Everyone out there that said Calipari is the problem with Kentucky, I think sometimes we do a horrible job of holding the universities accountable for what they do on their end. For instance, we watched Ohio State have to pivot of how they handled their football program, and luckily for Ryan Day, it didn't take firing him to get it done, although they were pretty close, obviously, three straight losses to that team up north. Mm -hmm. But it's like all of a sudden they get their act together, they start to work uniformly with the collectives all of a sudden now they're buying players left and right now there seems to be some uniformity in the approach to nil there wasn't you know a lot of you know mixed reactions or i should say mixed philosophies on the usage of it i think kentucky has a problem and i don't care if it's rick patino i don't care uh if it's the coach from baylor and coach drew i don't care who it is if they can't get their nil figured out that's going to be their problem and it doesn't matter if it's calipari or not calipari is going to go to arkansas he's at arkansas now Mm -hmm. their nil is going to be top notch He's going to be able to start going to get the, the you know the the mix of players that he wanted to get from the get go. I no one feels sorry for him because he had talent at Kentucky. It's not like he didn't. But at the same time, now he just gets to go be a basketball coach in today's day and age instead of having to fight his own university. I think that's a huge problem. Ohio State turned their act around. Now Ryan Day is flourishing. I don't think Kentucky did their part. I think they're just as much to blame for why they've struggled in recent years as many everyone wants to blame Calipari. Um, Cal Coach Cal is the at best fourth best head coach in the SEC. Obviously, Nate Odoms, you got Bruce Pearl. You What's the head coach? At? Rick Barnes. Um, so, at best, he was fourth best at Kentucky. He remains fourth best at Arkansas. He can talk about the NIL and getting better players and everything like that. But at the end of the day, he's still going to have to coach. And X's and O's has never been his forte, dating all the way back to when he was at um, Massachusetts with – Um, Marcus Canby dating back to when he was at Memphis with CDR and um, Derrick Rose and those guys like I mean the amount of talent that he's had at Kentucky and he has one national championship to show for it and some say that they probably shouldn't have won that national championship game based off the way he coached that game Um, he's going to do his job he's going to bring in in high level recruits but at the end of the day, he's going to have to draw plays and he's going to have to ex- get these guys to execute down the stretch. And Nate Odoms and those other guys have shown the ability to win more games than him in the recent like f- five years with less talented players. And I think that's going to continue. Uh, less talented players, but older veteran players, too. Calipari's approach of trying to throw all 18 year olds out there to go attack teams. Um, I, I I get you. Know, you're going to stack them there because other teams have been performing better. But I think if. Every coach was made a free agent right now. I don't think there's – in the SEC, if you just could pick from SEC coaches, I, I, I'm i not sure how many would <laughs> pick him fourth over those other guys at this point. But. I, I mean, pop, we, we've seen that popularity rules the day, especially in this country, not just in sports but in, in life in general. I mean, the most popular people in the world are the Kardashians. They have absolutely no talent. But popularity rules the day. So if people want to hire people based off of popularity – Go ahead. I want people that generate results. And Chris Beard, for whatever, you know, talk about what he did off the court or alleged to happen off the court. We can talk about that. But when he gets there, they win games. When Nate Odom shows up, they win games. We can talk about how slimy Bruce Pearl is. That's true, too. But where he goes, they win basketball games. I'm about winning games, not about winning press conferences. They win a game. He won the championship. Those other guys need to win a championship, too. (laughs) 
uh, nonetheless. But uh, it's Kinder and Kev Show, 1410 ESPN Radio. That's what's trending. Talk a little NFL coming up around the corner. Mel Kuyper released his latest uh, mock draft. I want to take a look. I haven't even looked at it yet. I wanted to kind of open it up and kind of take a peek live because yesterday I got into it with my guy Shaw. Shawski. I don't know if Shaw's going to call back today, but, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is I'm curious to see where Mel Kuyper has Mr. J.J. McCarthy, uh, the, che- the, the cheating quarterback of the cheating <laughs> university that cheated to win a national championship with that little asterisk next to it. The Barry Bonds of college football, uh, you know, the Roger Clemens, you know, the list goes on, the, the Houston Astros, um, you know, the, the Shohei Otani. I mean, we can go down the list. Shohei Otani He doesn't count as cheating, does he? No. No, he, I don't even know if his storyline exists anymore. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been buried. You know, I don't know why. I, started to, I was on a roll yesterday. Have you ever started to tell a joke and then forget what the hell the punchline was going to be? And that happened to me yesterday. I was talking about the Reds nearly blew that big lead the other day. They about yes. made quicker than Shohei. They, you know, they about made that lead disappear quicker than Shohei Otani's uh, sports betting scandal. That's what I was going for yesterday. Totally tripped over and fumbled over the words like you wouldn't believe. But uh, that made me think of that. So when do you think it's going to come back up? Because you know there's investigative reporters out there trying to find what's going on with this whole situation. When do you think it's going to come back up? Well, if it's investigative reporters that are finding anything on it, they're very um, – they pick and choose when they want to release that, right? Like, it doesn't surprise me that, hey, it was open – it was – the week it was the week of opening day for Major League Baseball, and boom, this comes out. How long do they know about this? I mean, we see this in football all the mm-hmm. time. I mean, that Urban Meyer scandal that broke the way it did years and years ago at Ohio State. I was going to say which one, but you know, yeah, McMurphy. I mean, he had that whole thing. He sat on that report until you know Big Ten media days, and then dropped that. All the reporters that had all the facts about Michigan cheating, you know, they sat on that and didn't release it until the season got here, and then that kind of was a black cloud that hovered over that team in the in the season, uh, and it fueled them to win a national championship. So, you know, they they, they support the cheating. But uh, none, have I mentioned that Michigan cheated to win a <laughs> national championship? I say the next big bombshell about Otani comes out All-Star weekend. Yeah, like, so I guess, yeah, I was all sidetracked. Yeah, that was my next point, like, the next big weekend for baseball will probably be the All-Star game when something big comes out again because, again, Shohei's going to be on full display. Um, hopefully he's healthy. He, I mean, he's killing it right now, mm-hmm. um, but I uh, definitely don't want him hurt. Look, he's good for baseball, even with the negative coverage that's around him, nonetheless. But Kenner and Cap, 1410 ESPN Radio, NFL mock draft. Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft. We'll uh, highlight that when we come back. Who does he have the Bengals taking? We'll take a look at some of the AFC North teams uh, and what kind of activity he has them engaging in. And we'll take a look at the top quarterbacks that come off the list as well. It's the Kenner and Cap Show, 1410 ESPN Radio and Chatterbox Sports. ESPN 1410 Wing AM Weather. Our forecast, rain likely in 59 tonight, showers breezy 69 tomorrow, Friday, showers and breezy in a high of 57. I'm Rick Schrempf for 1410 ES.
What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just gotta hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. <laughs> no, you hold my hand. Here we go. <laughs> Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. Hey. <laughs> hey we're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to start a band. <laughs> I got it. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. <laughs> Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Discover wants everyone to feel special with live 24-7 customer service. Limitations apply. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. 1410 ESPN Radio gives you five straight hours of local sports talk every weekday. Don't miss Off the Bench with Trace Fowler at 1 p.m. Followed by the Kinner and Kev Show from 3 to 6 p.m. The best local sports talk in the Miami Valley right here on 1410 ESPN Radio and on the iHeartRadio app. That's right, five straight hours of local sports talk here in the Miami Valley, Monday through Friday, of course, off the bench with Trace Fowler, Elliot Casey, and the guys, of course, and then the Kenner and Kev show. Who's that? Peter Kev. Oh. I'm Kenner. Oh, okay. Off the bench, one to three, Kenner and Kev, three to six, uh, card subject to change, uh, from, you know, Benjamin Chimera, who's a who's a champion, by the way. Champion of the world! He hosts a two-hour program on Thursday nights, card subject to change for all you wrestling fans out there. Adam, uh, you know, does his thing on Sunday, Sunday night, uh, Wing Reds Weekly, recaps the week that was for your Cincinnati Reds, Sunday nights at six. Uh, the Keith Byers Show, presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, that's every Monday at noon. JB? Yeah, I'd say we do few local things here and there but uh, nonetheless we welcome you back how about this story this caught my attention during the break terrell suggs kev um t sizzle got arrested oh boy. did you see what he got arrested for no i did not so i don't know about you when i go to a restaurant and they don't get my order right i get a little annoyed right we all do if you, you've gotten annoyed right yeah. like you ever get home and it's wrong but like that recently happened to me like so, about two weeks ago and so th- that but like have you ever got mad at a restaurant what at, what at a restaurant could piss you off to the point that you might, you know, well, Kevin never pulled a gun on somebody. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I need to watch where I go with that. But you know what I mean? Like, at least we get a little angry uh, because apparently Terrell Suggs uh, pulled a gun out and threatened to kill a man while at Starbucks. At Starbucks? It's like one of the happiest places in the world. Who gets pissed at Starbucks? <laughs> I mean, some people got used to get mad at Starbucks. I'm just saying, but like, but Starbucks. I mean, uh, the man swore at Suggs before the ex-NFL superstar challenged him to a fight. The former Baltimore Ravens pass rusher allegedly then claimed the man to be a p-word ass cracker before adding, <laughs> "I'll kill your ba." Can I say cracker on air? I feel like I can. It's not one of the yeah, but uh, yeah, but he said it, not me. I'm just reading it for for context. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> it's it's just something you eat. <laughs> nah. We're good. We don't want to say that word again on there. It's not a bad word. It, it is. is. It, it's not it's a, a bad slur. Word. It's not. It, 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 I put cheese on it and eat it. I, <laughs> it you know, sometimes peanut butter on it. But Terrell Suggs arrested uh, for, uh, you know, again, being oh, in a bad mood goodness. at Starbucks. I, like, I mean, I understand, like, okay, I'm not a coffee drinker. And I know the lines at Starbucks are crazy. I mean, I pass one every single day on my way to work, and I have to dodge traffic trying to get in and weave in and out of traffic for it. But to pull up. Uh, pull the gat on somebody over a mocha chica latte latte foam express like come on man it does uh, it's not that serious go to duncan <laughs> duncan's good duncan's good too they move you i mean I, i've never had to sit in line very long at a duncan let's just put it that way however starbucks has some my, my, i had to go pick up something for my wife the other day like they put like flowers or something like a lavender like i don't know what the hell it was like, it was something very odd something very weird I'm like i don't you know, I don't need my coffee smelling like a candle, like or like laundry, <laughs> like you know. But what she wants, she gets. So I went and got it. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, lavender. They put la- like actual lavender, and that like, what is happening right now? But, Small derailment. What would a restaurant have to do to make Kenner stop going there forever? What would a restaurant have to do? I don't know. I don't. I really 
I get like I said, I get angry when you know, or like DoorDash or something, and they drop it off, and it's not mad at DoorDash, but like when they they get, the, I mean, literally the order's right there on the screen. You just follow what's on the damn screen. You just do exactly what it says on the screen. So I just, I, I but I won't ever not go back to something unless the food's bad or something. Mm, yeah, I've I've cut a particular uh, restaurant off uh, that makes very good chicken. So uh, as everybody knows, I'm doing 75 hard, and I have a uh, a window of eating that has to end at 9 p.m. You know, I'm intermittent fasting. That's like kind of the the diet that I'm on when I'm doing the 75 hard challenge. So I have to be done eating by nine o'clock sharp, like no if, ands or buts or maybes about it. So, you know, we're out one night hanging out, hanging out. I was like, man, we haven't eaten. And we're past this one particular restaurant. I'm like, ooh, I haven't been there in a while. Let's get that. So we go there. We order the food, yada, yada, yada. We drive home. Like, oh, man, I've had this in a while. It's going to be great. And guess what wasn't in there? No sides. No sides. All we had was chicken. No sides. So now you won't go back? I'm not going just, back. Just because one person didn't provide the sides of that, you won't they go back? They will not get I mean, my hard-earned money. They will not get my money. Mm. I really wanted it. I re- so I had to make broccoli before I could eat my meal because I had to have a side. And now I had to scarf it down because I stood there at my table staring at a box that did not have my sides in it. But I'd still go back. Nah, nah. One person. Nah. So that one person represents the entire chain of Pollos Hermanos? And it's not a chain restaurant. It's not a chain restaurant either. Hmm. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. I'll tell you off the air. They're not going to get no free pub out of me either. Not getting a dollar out of me, no free pub out of me. Well, that's fine because they're like, you ain't getting sides out of us. So that's (laughs) what they said. That's what they had to say back as far as that's concerned. Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft. It's uh, mock draft season. Can you believe that we're getting closer and closer to draft time uh, as far as that's concerned? Uh, But uh, nonetheless, uh, we haven't spent a lot of time on the draft. Uh, We spent, I mean, right when the NFL season ended, I mean, college basketball was pretty damn interesting. That kind of took over a lot of our coverage as far as that's concerned. But now that college basketball has come and gone we turn our attention uh towards the nfl draft coming up which is why that that's here in less than just a few weeks so nonetheless Mel two Kuyper, weeks from today two weeks is it two weeks from today two weeks from tomorrow i'm two sorry weeks from tomorrow okay but uh no surprise mel kuyper caleb williams going number one i don't think that's a hot take i don't think that's a surprise uh you know it, it, it is what it is as far as that's concerned Jaden daniels going number two quarterback at lsu going to the washington uh commanders the patriots he does have taking drake may quarterback from North Carolina. So we know that the, you know, since Tom Brady left, the Patriots still just aggressively trying to find their replacement. It's kind of wild that they're a quarterback removed already from Tom Brady. They, you know, Tom Brady's <laughs> right. replacement has come and gone. Technically, there are two quarterbacks removed because they went right away. They didn't draft Mac Jones. You, Tom Brady's last year there, they kind of went with a quarter. I mean, they were throwing out random quarterbacks. Cam Newton was out there. Mm-hmm. Then they draft Mac Jones. There have been quite a few quarterbacks. I mean, they've looked almost Browns-esque over the last couple of years trying to get the quarterback situation right. I don't feel bad for the Patriots at all because for 20 years, they forgot what it was like to be like the rest of the NFL where they just didn't have that stability at quarterback. Now they know what it's like to be like the common folks around the National Football League, but could they get it right with Drake May? Uh, I hope not. I hope they don't draft Drake May. If I'm a New England Patriots fan, I'm not drafting Drake May. I am trading down and getting more picks. I mean, look at that roster, man. Look at the offensive weapons or the lack thereof on that team. Besides uh, Stevenson, can you name somebody on that offense? Because I sure can't. Like, they need more than just a quarterback, be it if it was Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels. They need a lot of players. They need a an influx of talent. So I, if I'm the Patriots, I'm trying to sell that pick and try to trade back and get multiple players. It's just with all the talented quarterbacks that are in this draft right now, it would be kind of weird to, to pass up on them. Drake May is just one that he kind of reminds me of the quarterback that the Titans took last year. Why am I drawing a blank? Will Levis. Will Levis. It's just kind of very similar to that, where there's a lot of teams who were talking him up, but I just, I don't know. Drake May has been thrown out there for a while, but if my team was picking there and they were taking Drake May, I wouldn't feel all the warms and fuzzies inside, but maybe that's why he would be the best pick uh, as far (laughs) as that's concerned, because the QBs that usually have more flash and and more talking points usually end up being more of the bust type uh, anyway, but nonetheless, the last time the Patriots took a quarterback that seemed like they're type of guy it didn't work out with mac jones so we'll see what ends up happening when it's all said and done former buckeye marvin harrison jr 
No surprise here. Again, we talked about this yesterday. The Cardinals are willing to move on from their number four pick, mm. but they want three first rounders in exchange for it. You know, we were talking about now Marvin Harrison Jr. Is he really worth three first rounders? I don't think the the Cardinals are looking at that number four pick saying Harrison's worth three first rounders, but that pick is, especially if you want one of those highly sought after quarterbacks outside of Jaden Daniels, outside of Drake May, outside of Caleb Williams. So that would put what JJ McCarthy right. uh, and guys like that in the mix. So J.J. McCarthy's not worth three first-rounders. In fact, anyone outside of Caleb Williams, you know, and the guys we talked about, I don't think any one of those guys is worth three first-round draft picks. So he has the Cardinals taking wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. They have their quarterback in Kyler Murray, uh, and he could potentially get his number one receiver option there uh, in Arizona. Yeah, I think that's ultimately where Marv is going to end up. I don't think anybody's going to be trading with them to move up. The only team that I think that they would be able to make a trade with would be the Pats. Um, to get a Drake May. I think a lot of teams out there are looking to get J.J. McCarthy. They won't have to jump up to the four spot to get him. All right, next up, going in over to the number five pick. So this is uh, Minnesota Vikings again. Mm. You know, number five, taking J.J. Mm. McCarthy. I know there have been a team, them and the Denver Broncos have been attached to J.J. McCarthy. So this means that the Minnesota Vikings have traded traded up to jump up there. Um, I don't hate it for them. I do hate the fact that they traded up to get him. Like, I believe what they were like drafting at 11, right? Mm -hmm. I think they can get him at 11. I'm not sure that there's anybody out there besides Minnesota and Denver that is fawning over J.J. McCarthy right now. Um, I'm not sure they have to make that move, but I do like that for them. I mean, you got Sam Darnold right there. And then, I mean, shoot, you look at the weapons that they have on offense from uh, Jordan Addison to obviously Justin Jefferson. I mean, you got the guys on the outside to make plays and you drop in a young quarterback and an offensive head coach. So I think that is a good move for whomever, like for it be J.J. McCarthy, be it Drake May. Any of the top level quarterbacks in this draft, this is that's one of the places you want to go. A place that you don't want to go is a situation like the Washington Commanders uh, uh, or the New England Patriots. Like though, the guys that go there, you're gonna fail. Just just plain and simple, you are not set up for success with the Commanders or the Patriots. Whoever gets to go to Minnesota, you're gonna have a better season than whoever goes to Washington D.C. I tell you that. Yeah, and the thing is, it was the Chargers who have that number five pick. The Chargers have to be pissed because I think they look at the Cardinals in front of them as just a pain in their behind because, like... I think they would love to put Marvin Harrison Jr. with Justin Herbert. I think that they would take Marvin Harrison Jr. in a heartbeat, and I think if any other team is at number four, probably not taking Marvin Harrison Jr. But the Chargers are picking as high as they are because they were derailed by injuries. They're not picking that high because they were the fifth worst team in football. I mean, technically by record they were last year, but that's not a bad football team, although they have unloaded a lot of guys. Last year they were a very good team that just got derailed by injuries. That's why they're picking as high as they are. Uh, but with the and Cardinals, great coaching. Don't forget the great coaching. Yeah, well, with the, I mean, we'll see if the Chargers <laughs> pick up any cheating ways this coming up season. But uh, no, with number four, you know, Marvin Harrison going at number four, there's really not anybody that the Chargers have to have at number five that they probably couldn't get maybe a few picks later, even at that number 11 spot yeah. if they swap that pick with the with the, with the the Vikings, as we talked about, so they can get an additional first rounder if they needed to uh, on top of that. So, yeah, I think that makes sense if the Chargers did decide uh, to move back. But, yes, uh, J.J. McCarthy, a top five pick according to Mel Kuyper, and that means he has four QBs going um, in the first five picks. It's pretty wild. Yeah, it's definitely wild, but like that's where we are. Like All these teams out here are quarterback starving and hoping that they see what happened with the Texans and like maybe our quarterback can be just like C.J. Stroud and, and fix everything around us and give us that momentum that we desperately need. My opinion about it is you guys are a long ways away from just dropping the quarterback in there into your organization and fixing things. Uh, like I said before, whoever goes to the Minnesota Vikings, it be it McCarthy, be it Jaden Daniels, be it Drake May, be it Bo Nix, they're in a better situation than whoever – is taking snaps for the Patriots as a rookie quarterback or the Commanders as a rookie quarterback. Yeah, again, four QBs in the first five picks, according to Mel Kuyper. I haven't combed through the rest. Curious to see if another QB is going to pop up along the way. Uh, Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver from LSU, going number six uh, to the New York Giants. It's wild. When the Bengals selected Marvin Harrison, or Marvin Harrison, when gosh, I don't want that to happen. I know (laughs) Bengals fans do. Uh, When the Bengals selected Jamar Chase years ago, it was one of those things where you don't take a receiver that high in the draft. Well, 
we watched the impact of a Jamar Chase and what he had on the Cincinnati Bengals, and here we are just a few drafts later and, you know, talking about two wide receivers being taken. I mean, four QBs in the first five picks and two wide receivers in the first six, all offense in the first six picks uh, before defense. Now another offensive player, the Tennessee Titans, Joe Ott, the offensive tackle mm. from Notre Dame, going number seven. Uh, the Falcons going defense. The first defensive player off the board coming at number eight to the Falcons, out, uh, outside linebacker Dallas Turner. Yeah, yeah, from Bama. Yeah, and that that's what you need. I mean, you obviously have your offensive weapons go along with Kirk Cousins. I mean, you got Drake London, you got Pitts, you got B. John Robinson. You got things handled on the offense, and the offensive line is pretty good as well. So now you got to start bolstering up that defense some more. You get a pass rusher. So another interesting uh, Mel Kuyper thing here is the Bears picking at number nine, mm -hmm. taking uh, you know the wide receiver from Washington. And I always mispronounce his last name, so I'll let you take it. Roma Duzene. Roma Duzene. There we go. That's a doozy. Uh, but a Duzene right now is the latest wide receiver to go in the first ten picks, and the Bears get a great tandem according to Mel Kuyper. So four quarterbacks taken in the top ten and three wide receivers being taken in the top ten. That shows you the direction of where the NFL is going. Again, a couple years ago, like I said, the Bengals, they take Jamar Chase, including myself. A lot of people rip them. You don't take a wide receiver that high. You know, you, you, you build in the trenches. You get your quarterbacks there. You know, you go for guys like that. You don't take running backs and wide receivers in the top ten. And uh, the game has changed, and now here we are, three receivers. According to Mel Kuyper, the draft, mm -hmm. obviously, we'll see what you know ends up, ends up happening. But three receivers taken in the top ten. But an interesting one right there, uh, the Bears, obviously, taking, Marv or taking their guy, Caleb Williams, at the number one pick, potentially getting a wide receiver for the next four years as well. Absolutely. You match those two up together on the same timeline. I mean, I'm, we all love Keenan Allen, but we got to do the math on this, man. Keenan Allen's been in his league for quite a long time. Like, he's not... He's got more years behind him that he has ahead of him, and there's no guarantee that he's going to be with the Bears this, this following season. So you get another young wide receiver. You have DJ Moore and the Rome on the outside. You can have Keenan Allen work in the middle, you know, as a power slot receiver. So that's a good pickup for the Bears. All right, and then to round out the top 10 of Mel Kuyper's uh, latest uh, mock draft that came out earlier today, um, the best tight end of the draft, and that's Brock Bowers and going to the New York Jets uh, at number 10. Most the Jets have a lot of needs, too. Offensive linemen, of course, that is what they kind of really need. Uh, but, you know, when you have a big-time, you know, playmaker like – look, you look at what the Chiefs have done. Everyone's going to talk about the Chiefs with the defense, the defense. The Chiefs a few years ago made a decision – when they had a choice between Travis Kelsey or, uh, you know, obviously, and, and Tyreek Hill, they chose, instead of going with the best wide receiver in football at the time, they went with the best tight end in football. And they've been able, because of that, look, when you can get the type of production you get out of the tight end that the Chiefs have had, which is equivalent to some of the top wide receivers in football, but yet you look at what you pay the top tight ends in football, you're going to get the same production from a pass catcher at tight end for 12 to 15 mil a year that you would from a Jamar Chase for what's about to be 30 mil a year. I think it makes a lot of it made complete business sense for the Kansas City Chiefs to look at Travis Kelsey and say he's a big time playmaker. Is he as explosive as Travis Kel or as uh, Tyreek Hill? No, but. Kelsey is going to be our guy that we marry for the next, you know, four or five years. They built a dynasty around him and uh, obviously Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, they would have loved to have Tyreek Hill, but they went ahead with the better financial decision and you get just as much production. And I think that's why it's important for the Jets to look at a guy like Brock Bowers. If he's there at number 18 for the Bengals, I think that they need to really go that route as well. Uh, their Bengals fans obsessed with the idea of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. It's not happening. It's happening for one more year. It's not happening long term. Tight end should have been the direction that they go. Follow the blueprint, but I like that. I don't know how much longer Aaron Rodgers is going to play, but if he still has enough left in the tank, if Brock Bowers is as advertised, that's a hell of a pass catcher along with you know Garrett Wilson and some of the other star guys they have over there. Who you, how much influence do you think Aaron Rodgers has in this draft pick? I think this is why they're going this direction with this draft pick. I think they're trying to give him as many pass catchers as possible. Obviously, when Aaron Rodgers retires, it's not a horrible thing to have Brock Bowers you know, post Aaron Rodgers, but I think the smart decision is to go boring and, and load up the trenches because, hey, that's one reason why he got hurt on the, what, the first or second drop back of last season. But we'll see if, the, you know, there's a lot of other draft picks for them to play with, no doubt. Yeah, if I'm them, I'm going offensive line. I'm getting a, a guy out of Penn State or I'm getting uh, Mims from Georgia. I'm getting C.J. Latham from Bama, one of those dudes. Because you, you just said it. I mean, second drop back of the year, El Snapo under pressure constantly i mean you look at the other quarterbacks that played for them they were under pressure all day long uh you got to be able to protect aaron Rodgers in order to get to where you want to be i would say go offensive line 
All right, continue to go down the list. Let's uh, get all the way to the Bengals at number 18. According to Mel Kuyper, he has the Cincinnati Bengals taken Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle out of Texas. Look, the Bengals are at a point now where their drafts, if you have a boring draft, that's a good thing. That means you've checked off all the other fun positions. If you're not drafting quarterback and wide receivers and running backs, that means you're pretty set there, at least early on. You're going after the boring positions, although this is a needed position. Right. The Bengals had the second worst defense in the National Football League last year. You know, I know they went, they got the safety from the Ravens, but you know, they add another, you know, guy up front on the defensive line, but you also just replace DJ Reader with a player similar to DJ Reader. I don't know how much you've improved defensively. You've improved at safety. You haven't improved anywhere else. You need to find another pass rusher to be able to kind of help Hendrickson a little bit because that's the name of the game. You look at the Ravens, they can get to the quarterback. The Browns, they feast on the quarterback. The Steelers, they can feast on the quarterback. And then there's the Bengals, who they like to tickle the quarterback a little bit. They have one of the best sack guys, obviously, in the NFL in Hendrickson, but they have no one else that any offense uh, you know, is worried about. They need to fix that. This could be the answer to that right there. Yeah, so are you a – Draft by need guy or a best player available guy? Oof. I think it depends on the situation that you're in. I don't think it's the I, I wouldn't have the same approach every single season. I think for the Cincinnati Bengals it needs to be need right now. Need right now because they have so many. Mm -hmm. You know, again, second worst run team in football, second worst defense in football. Um your quarterback is not the most reliable when he's on the field. He's fantastic, but two seasons where he's had to miss the pretty much the whole season because he's always out at camp. There's always some reason why he's out. I think they have to go with the best. You know, they have to go with need because they they have to find a way to fill a lot of those holes so that they can maximize the attack of Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Joe Burrow. This is absolutely the way to go in my book. Whoever is the best defensive tackle available on the board, if it's this uh, young man out of Texas, if it's somebody else out there, whoever's the best defensive tackle available, the Bengals should draft him. All right, as we wrap this up again, we'll just kind of finish up with so the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, going Graham Barton, the offensive lineman from Duke. Obviously, they need all the help they can so that, uh, you know, he can ride. <laughs> yeah, they definitely need – that is a situation where they're drafting – where the Pittsburgh Steelers always draft by need. Um, last year, they needed a cornerback. They went and got <laughs> uh, Joey Porter Jr. Last year, they needed an offensive tackle. They got uh, Jones from Bama. This year, they need a center. They're going to draft a center if it's this kid from Duke or if it's the kid from uh, Oregon or if it's the uh, one from West Virginia. Long as they land on one of those three dudes, I'm happy. All right, and then uh, the Browns, obviously, no first-round pick uh, this year, so they don't have a first-round pick, obviously. The Baltimore Ravens at number 30, Kool-Aid McKinstry, the cornerback out of Alabama. So a very boring AFC North draft, <laughs> uh, no doubt about it. But, again, you got a lot of teams who are very loaded, um, and they're you know going for need versus flash and all that stuff, best player available. Uh, but, yeah, Baltimore, Kool-Aid McKinstry, again, going out to get more secondary help. And, again, when you play in a division uh, with a loaded quarterback group like the AFC North, you need as much secondary help as you could possibly. We get. Yeah, I think that says a lot about what they think of Marlon Humphrey Jr. Um, I think they're believing this is going to be his last year with the team if they go ahead and go that route and grab Kool-Aid from Bama. Um, for me, if I'm the uh, Baltimore Ravens, I'm looking and thinking, like, where can we trade back and grab another wide receiver in the second round, potentially two wide receivers in the second round, or even defensive line. I mean, you know, they uh, Calais Campbell is not back with the team. Um, uh, Clowney's not back with the team. So a pass rusher or a defensive tackle is what I would go to if I was the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, obviously their big free agent splash signing, uh, Derrick Henry. Um, but, uh, you know, they're going with – it's kind of one of the more flashier offensive Ravens teams compared to losing some key pieces on defense. Yeah, so they definitely needed to, to go that route, no doubt about it. Xavier Leggett, the wide receiver from South mm. Carolina, uh, is who Mel Kuyper has going to the Kansas City Chiefs, by the way, um, at number 32. Look, that's uh, obviously... Think DK you, Metcalf. You want to provide another wide receiver for Patrick Mahomes, but... Unfortunately, with this Rice situation, it may not be adding to a receiver core. It might just be replacing a key weapon on that receiving core. Again, this was one of the worst uh, receiving cores in football last year as far as, you know, dropping, you know, so many passes. Um, and then he they was finally the only got good one. one. <laughs> and now we don't know if he'll ever play a snap for the Chiefs again uh, as far as that's concerned. All right. So Kenner and Kev Show, 1410 ESPN Radio. Fans of college teams with NIL collectives. I am curious your thoughts. Where do you guys sit on your willingness to donate money to go buy players. 
You know, what, how do you feel when, when collectives almost guilt you and our team's success is based on what you do? You know, these, I mean, with millions and millions of dollars being funneled into these universities, they turn it on you to make you feel like you're responsible for the success on and off the floor. Do you look at it the same way I do? I'm curious. We're going to talk about that when we come back, Kevin and I, and then, of course, uh, we'll get your thoughts. We're on the Chatterbox Sports YouTube page. Go check that out. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to their channel and uh, jump in on the chat there. Um, You can also give us a call at 518-1410. The phone lines are open. 518-1410. We'll be right back. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6759. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6759. That's 800-575-6759. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick. Sorry, kids. (laughs) Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Have you heard? Bath Creations has moved to their new location and showroom at 8741 North Kimmel Road in Clayton. This gives you even more opportunity to see the incredible amenities and craftsmanship Bath Creation offers. With Bath Creations, you get a beautiful, modern bathroom that is safe, comfortable, and affordable. Attention first responders, veterans, and active military. Save an additional $500 off your purchase. Visit at 8741 North Kimmel Road in Clayton or online at mybathcreations.com and get a new bath today. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 937-936-0325. That's 937-936-0325. 937 936 0325. It's Kubota Orange Days. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And now through June 30th, get 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. See the details at KubotaOrangedays.com. Stop by Columbus Equipment in Columbus, Dayton, or Toledo to see a full line of Kubota construction equipment. Or check us out online at ColumbusEquipment.com. Did you know that although our name may be Carol Worth's Tire, 
We're more than tires. We're one of the leading service centers in the area from personal vehicles to fleet maintenance. We'll keep you on the road. Come see us at Carol Wirtz Tire. Did you know that Carol Wirtz specializes in servicing mixed fleet vehicles? We keep your business moving by tailoring our service programs to meet your company's specific needs. Let us keep your fleet on the road with Carol Wirtz Tire. Don't get stuck gearing up for spring while everyone else is enjoying the warm weather. Invisible Fence Brand works in any season, giving your pet the freedom they deserve now. Visit InvisibleFence.com to learn more. Dayton sports fans, don't forget to follow and subscribe to ESPN Dayton's YouTube channel. Listen, watch, interact. Search ESPN Dayton on YouTube. Kev, it's a huge day today. You know that? Is it? You know what day it is? What day is it? It's one day, one Dayton. That's what it is. I don't know why I cringe with this. Dayton's not the only one. I'm just using them as an example to segue into this next part. I just, we know how much money is floated out there. We know how much money these universities have. We may not know every dollar because Dayton's private and, you know, all Mm. that stuff. They don't have to list all that. But, like, you know, that arena... The way they carry themselves, like they're not, they, they shouldn't be digitally shaking a can asking for pennies on the digital corner. That's all I'm saying. I cringe because Ohio State does. I'm not throwing Dayton under the bus. I'm throwing all universities under the bus. Ohio State does it. Kentucky's does it. Like all these schools. When these universities, with all the money that's being floated around in sports, when I come across this, this you know, the one day, you know, this one day, one Dayton thing or whatever, all the catchphrases, I don't know what Ohio State calls theirs, but it's a day where they basically have all their coaches and athletes basically go and tug on your heartstrings. I'm waiting for them to hold a puppy with Sarah McLaughlin playing in the background asking you for your donations. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. My thing is this. If there are enough people who know how to do their damn job, they shouldn't rely on Justin or Kevin or or whoever's watching this to donate their money so that you can go win basketball games. I I think it's cringe. Uh, they have a video of Anthony Grant, and it's not Dayton. I'm tar- I'm using Dayton because it's local. Uh, Dayton, uh, you know, they put their basketball coach out there. You know, we we appreciate our fans and blah 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 and all this stuff, and that's why we're asking for you to give us money so we can continue to be the you know athletic blah 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 that we are and all this stuff. And I'm just like, it's cringe. I don't like it. I think it's very very weird. But sports, we are we all for every one of you out there that say I would never. Follow a cult. I would never be in a cult. You're in a cult. I'm in a cult. I'm a sports fan. We're all in a cult. We just we could sit there and act like we're not. But for those of you out there who see the Anthony Grant, Sarah McLaughlin, donate your money to save a dog commercial, you are in a cult. I'm in a cult if I do it. That's all I'm saying. I think it's cringe. It's not just Dayton. It's every team out there. But I think it's cringe, Kev. I don't like it. I do not think it's our responsibility for Anthony Grant, who gets paid millions, for Neil Sullivan, the athletic director, who gets paid millions, Um, all the administrators that make six figures out there. I'm sorry. Don't ask poor Dayton fans to give you their hard-earned money that they already give you with their season tickets. Uh, You know, like we talked about during COVID when they said, hey, basically, if you don't pay your seat license, you're going to lose it. You know, uh, (laughs) we don't have a season, but if you don't pay your seat license this season for a season that doesn't exist, you're not allowed at the arena. We're going to take it from you. But, hey, you know, we love our fans. Here, give us some more money so we can what? What? Like, stop it with this. I'm, I, I, it's cringe, and Ohio State does it. I hate it, Kev. It just it makes me nauseous. I, I just, uh, I don't know. They, they can get mad at me all they want. I would be saying this about any school that does it. Every school that does it, I think it's cringe. Your university, your athletics department, you make millions of dollars a year. Stop asking your fans, who already give to you so much, for more money. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, the NCAA and the schools need to come to a situation where a part of that money, that TV money, is brought to the collectives that's what needs to happen currently that's not allowed so to speak but like that's what needs to happen like you're signing these huge contracts with espn or cbs or whoever your tv partner is 
part of that money needs to be going directly to the collectives to supplement that income to the collectives as opposed to yeah. asking the fans to do it. Now, if the fans want to do it, okay, that's fine. You want to give a little bit more because, I mean, part of the job of athletic director is to fundraise for not only the school and all the athletic departments, but obviously now with the whole collectives and everything like that. Um, but the crazy part about it, just like anything else, if you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> you just don't. Hey, man, my my fandom stops at watching and going to games. I'm not giving none of y'all money. <laughs> like that's just not happening. I and furthermore, I I ha don't have it to give. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I mean, when I go to an Ohio State game in the fall, I'm dropping uh probably about two hundred two hundred fifty dollars a ticket to go to the Ohio State game for a, not a Big Ten game at that, for a non-conference game. And I'm not talking about a non-conference game versus Texas or Oregon. I'm talking about a non-conference game versus the Little Sisters of Poor. And then, oh, yeah, we got to eat. And where are we going to eat at? Uh, shoot, we might as well just eat inside the stadium. Oh, that's more money. And then, oh, yeah, new season, got to give me a new hat. Oh, new season, got to give me a new hoodie. Like So my support ends at the merch and going to the games and obviously – fanning out and watching it on tv and listening right here on 1410 wing am uh i'm parking I'm, yeah don't forget that and so i'm i'm not i'm not donating to the collective now there's other people out there that make millions and millions and millions of dollars that already donate to the universities not only ohio state but all across the country you got the money to give you got the money to give so it can be a nice little tax write-off knock yourself out but i'm not doing it yeah i mean it's like imagine all like if you have like all the paywall subscriptions out there, but if once a year they still, after the paywall, you already pay your paywall subscription stuff, whatever. And then every so often they ask you, Hey, we need more money. Can you give us more money so we can help giving you this great content? It's like, no, you got to figure it out. You're your, not yourself. just raise the rates. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, whatever. But this is, I, I just, I think it's what Brad says. Maybe, um, on YouTube, we're on the Chatterbox uh, YouTube channel, by the way. As Brad says, maybe it wouldn't be as cringy if they paid taxes. So, <laughs> I mean, let's, yeah, uh, you know, Nate, uh, how you doing, Nate? Nate says, I agree about the NIL part. This thing always gets in the way. I can't, like, move this. I feel like an, I say this every show. I feel like an 80-year-old where I can't read this stuff because. How it, old are you? Yeah. Uh, he goes, uh, I but I, I agree about the NIL part about getting fans and alums to donate is cringe uh, for all schools. So. To be fair, this one day, the, the this thing that they're doing for Dayton, some of this is to donate to the athletics department and all that, and that's part of the fundraising for the athletics directors. That's separate from the collective. But they've combined some of this stuff, and that's where I'm, I'm segueing into the next part. I guess I, let me, I should walk back a little bit. If you are... If you are very well off and you want to give back to your university, more power to you. I guess that is what it is. But mm -hmm. I guess, but like a lot of times, that's people choosing to do that on their own. But like the shaking the digital tin can, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that. I think it's cringe. Um, but to do it for NIL, I also think that's cringe. I also think that's weird. That is literally like that's not what NIL was supposed to be. Right. And they have, you know. Well, Ohio State tried to do it, quote unquote, the right way. Yep. And we saw the results. And, and it we, works. And, That's and, the thing. And, 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 well, and we weren't. We don't know. We weren't happy with those sad results. And there's no mystery why the NIL has started to boom because people weren't happy with the results. And like you talked about earlier, like we're all in the cult, and they know this. Like they know that. Like, hey man, some people out here love Ohio State or love their favorite school or whatever the case may be more than they love their own kids. <laughs> like, yeah. I, mean, I know people out there that won't go to their kids' soccer games because the Buckeyes are on. Like, it, it, that's that's the fact of the matter. My uh, stepsister, when she got married, we were furious at her because she picked a Saturday <laughs> during Ohio State season. Like, And I remember we were at the church, and I had uh, my old phone case. It was like one of those, like, adult, you could put your like card and ID and stuff in it. So, you know, in the pew at the church, I have my phone with that little case tucked into the back the bible is like literally holding it back and i have the football game on I, I don't even know if they if they did their kiss i don't know if anyone objected i have no clue um i you know i was very uh religious that day you know hallelujah you screaming a lot of that stuff in the church you know i had the game on there hallelujah as far as that's concerned but nonetheless so the the other cringe part about nil that that popped up the other day that dayton fans are going crazy over and i gotta find it here um so they were creating these here it is so they were creating these Deron Holmes trading cards, right? 
So this, it looks to be like a seven, eight, nine-year-old kid, maybe even younger, found this one-of-one Deron Holmes, very rare, very valuable card. They spent, him and his family spent money on this card. And they posted on social media that we got this one-of-one card. The, the, those cards, when you used to give your money, that money is for NIL and that type of stuff, too. That I don't mind. Because um, you're getting something. Because you're getting something. But just shaking. And, again, I keep calling it this this digital homeless tin can on there. I, I think that's weird. But this, okay, you're buying these trading cards. You're getting something physical in return. Um, you know, like uh, Deron Holmes has, like, a T-shirt and stuff like that like that he, that he sells. He has other stuff mm. throughout his line, these cards and all that. He gets money from that. That's fine. At least fans are getting something in return. That's what NIL was supposed to be, so these guys can make money off their name, their image, and their likeness. I'm cool with that. That's fine. But this is the problem. So Dayton Sixth is their NIL collective, okay? Mm -hmm. When this kid posted that picture of the card, they tweeted, oh, my God, oh, my God, we know what we think. What say you, Flyer Faithful? We would love if this, and he they tagged this kid in there, we would love if you would donate the Duran Holmes one-of-one one back on card auto to us, and we auctioned it off. What say you? Hey, let's if we act really excited about screwing our fans over, maybe they'll be dumb enough to fall for it. Leave the kid alone. Let him enjoy his one-of-one one Deron Holmes trading card that him and his family paid money for and go find other ways to make money for your collective with all your rich-ass fans that have been supporting the program. That That's weird to me. I don't like that. And I thought I was just a hater at first. I thought I was going to get accused of hating. But the bottom line is Dayton fans torched this, and they still kept it up. The tweet's still up to this minute. That's very weird. That's like tops. And you get a Shohei Otani rookie card, and Tops reaching out to you like, "Hey, man, you want to get that back?" Like, no, dude. Like, I do not want to give this. Come card on, be back. a good fan. I see. I bet yeah. you would hold it hostage. You would, would hold it hostage. I would. I definitely <laughs> would. I definitely would. That's that's uh. that's very weird. That's super weird. Oh, donate it back. Why would I donate it back? It almost reminds me of a. Uh, it's an old Fresh Prince of Bel-Air episode where Will is at the country club with Uncle Phil and the family, and they're doing a donation, and Will wins the donation. And then, like, well, it's customary that you donate it back so we can do it again next year. It's like, well, well I, I paid for it. Why am I giving it back? Like, that's exactly what has happened here. Like, they pay for it. You advertise this as a one-on-one -on -one thing. I actually won the one-of-one. -one. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be celebrating that i have the only one like that's the whole purpose of things so yeah man it's it's, it's uh, i'm surprised that they kept it up i'm surprised like that i'm not surprised that there's been a huge backlash on the fan base like anybody clear as day can feel that way no matter how much they love their team and love their university like they can recognize wrong is wrong and especially in this situation like yo hey man this this family remove the fact that it's a kid if it was a grown man or a grown woman and they won you can't ask them to donate something back okay you want me to donate it back what are you giving me yeah i'm getting some season tickets something you you want to just try to keep this bill this uh wheel rolling you better give me something i better be having dinner with coach ag every single night drawing up plays let me draw plays let me be on the sideline let me be an assistant coach or something i'm not just about to get this back to you because obviously you want it back because it's very valuable, so you can try to make more money off of it. Not gonna happen. Yeah, just like I said, not a. I, I like the concept of the NIO collectives. They're they're built to do their part, but they're supposed to like set up events for meet and greets. You know, do your meet and greet like op, like hey, if you want a chance to come meet these guys, you know, for a fee, you could take a picture, get an autograph, buy a T-shirt, but the fans are getting something in return. Right. And that's what this initial that's what the card thing was. Like that that they bought that card. That card is what you bought. But now you want to donate it back? Nah, bro. What are we doing here? Now, the family probably did it. They probably and to be fair, that family, and I'm not dropping names cuz you know from the from the tweet or whatever. That family probably doesn't feel like they were treated any certain way. And I don't think the NIL did it in any malicious way either. I just think it just came across cringe. That seems to be the theme of the segment. And a lot of people probably say a lot of my segments are cringe <laughs> you know but nonetheless kinner and kev 1410 espn radio at progressive we know money can't buy you happiness but money did help you buy an RV. 
which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable coworker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes. And further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-709-7022. 800-709-7022. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. I don't know what I want to do. I'm just not sure that college is right for me. Have you considered a career in dental assisting? I love my job as a dental assistant. I have flexible work hours, the money is good, and I get to work in a professional, people-oriented dental office. What I really love about my job is knowing that I give people a healthy smile. For more information about becoming a dental assistant, contact your high school guidance counselor. Or if you are no longer in school, talk to a dentist in your community or visit ODA.org. This message is brought to you by the members of the Ohio Dental Association. Hey, let me tell you about the advantages of driving with my friends at Cordell Transportation. First of all, for the new year, they're offering brand new equipment to drive. They've purchased new equipment, and not a lot of people could say that, but they've got it, and they're ready to roll with you. Cordell Transportation is offering an incredible $5,000 sign-on bonus paid over 18 months. If you're an experienced Class A CDL driver looking for excellent benefits, home daily dedicated lanes, no touch freights, then apply today online at CordellTransportation.com. Cordell Transportation. Driven to succeed. The very best high quality used car selection in the area is found at Chevrolet of Troy. Local late model pre owned vehicles that are ready to move. All used cars come with a no charge warranty. That's incredible. This is a quality, hand picked inventory ready for you to shop today. Check out our digital storefront right now at ChevroletOfTroy.com. Chevrolet of Troy has the vehicle of your choice at our full service premium dealership. We are proud to be your best choice for your next used vehicle purchase. 1375 South Market street in troy we all hear the radio ads about the irs they tell you to be afraid to be scared and they try to frighten you into calling i'm not here to do that tax relief advocates is different tra is here to tell you that if you owe money to the irs whether it's five thousand fifty thousand or five hundred thousand we have a solution it doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car at work or with your kids no matter where you are call now 800-575-6759 don't lose hope TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at TRA.com or call 800-575-6759. That's 800-575-6759. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. Get the best quality outdoor supplies now at Menards. Stock up for your feathered friends. Whether you're a bird enthusiast or simply enjoy the sights and sounds of nature, our Enchanted Garden Wild Bird Food is a must-have year-round. 40-pound bags are on sale now through April 14th. Check out our wide selection of pet and wildlife items in store or online at Menards.com for more great deals happening now. Save big money at Menards. 
Try the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. It's like walking down recent memory lane. And be quick, it's only available for a limited time. Did you know that looking at the world from a new perspective might make sense? but not when you're in your car. Make sure your vehicle's up to date, including your tires, so you don't end up looking at things upside down. Come see us at Carol Works Tire. Bald can be beautiful, but not when it comes to your tires. Low or worse, no tread on your tires is dangerous. It makes it harder for your vehicle to stop, leaving you prone to accidents. Come see us at Carol Works Tire. With Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot, you can get up to $1,000 off select laundry appliances from top brands like LG, America's most reliable line of appliances. And with convenient shopping in-store and online, you can get new appliances with smart, intuitive features any way you want. Like a new LG Wash Combo All-in-One that can run a full load in under two hours. Right now, get $1,000 off select laundry appliances with Spring Black Friday savings in-store and online at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. You're going to feel a puff of air. Jong's Optometry oh. has set their sights on staffing up. Try the next line. Hey, Kim, can you tell our 2 o'clock we're running 15 behind? Sorry, we're a bit backed up today. He needs an optometric now, technician to keep an eye on it all. Where are the dilation drops? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Hey folks, it's game day and the betting's gonna be intense, Drew. You said it, Dave. But a good pregame routine keeps betting responsible. That's right, you gotta pause before you play. Good call. Sports betting is hot. But it can be risky. And pausing to set limits is an all-star move. That's right, Dave. If you bet on sports, pause before you play to set limits, recognize the risk, and know when to stop. Learn more at pausebeforeyouplay.org. Reds back at it tonight, 6.40, the first pitch, 6.10 coverage begins. Remember, no Kinner and Kev show tomorrow. Uh, Reds have a 1.10 uh, first pitch tomorrow, so that'll knock our show out, so keep that in mind. Um, but, uh, yeah, Kinner and Kev show, 14.10 ESPN Radio. Dayton's radio home is Cincinnati Reds uh, baseball. Looking to rebound again here tonight uh, after suffering a loss last night in Game 2. So uh, we'll have that coming up for you here in a little bit. I know the weather's kind of a little iffy. So, Everyone last week, I got on to people who were all mad at the meteorologists because they were, you know, very wrong about that storm last week. And there's predicting some more bad weather tomorrow. I mean, it is spring; it's storm season. But uh, I see Storm's so coming. many, so much animosity towards meteorologists. And I, I'm here to say, be nice to your meteorologists. Indeed, indeed, they save lives, man, for sure, man. Listen to them as well. And I've always said this: if they're wrong, a lot of times what we get mad at is they say that we're going to get ten feet of snow, or we're going to get a bajillion tornadoes if there was ever a time i want somebody to be wrong it's that i don't want a bajillion tornadoes i don't want 10 feet of snow so i'm kind of glad that the weather pattern shifted because that's really what happened it shifted right like so uh but nonetheless slide guess, to the right yeah do that cha-cha <laughs> slide we like when the weather patterns do the cha-cha slide uh, as far as that's concerned what up drew garrison he says uh steer steer home run and red's money line at plus 600 is free money I haven't taken a look at any of the bets I'm going to place here uh, later on tonight. I made a lot of money off the Reds last year. You know, I've yet I placed a bet on the Reds on opening day uh, for Ellie to get multiple bases, but I haven't bet on the Reds since then. Mm. I need to get back into my game. The last bet I made, I made it at the beginning of the tournament. I put down like a three dollar bet on UConn and South Carolina to win their tournaments respectively. I cashed in for my twenty three dollars. Three doll hairs yes, for twenty three. Yes, sir. Not bad. That's actually not a bad payout, weren't they? The two favorites. <laughs> That's like but it easy was so money. early. Oh, yeah. It was so early. And again, nothing's easy uh, in that tournament, you know, as far as that's concerned. Uh, we have a caller on hold. He said he wanted to. Said I was a hypocrite. Huh? He was going off of me about something. I said, you know what? Uh oh. You know, we'll see. Uh, Drew Garrison said that's my own boost. I got the. Oh, that's my own boost. I got them to do just some shameless self promotion in the chat. Oh, so Drew, you want to take part in the day? You know. 
you know, kind of shaking the digital can. I no, that's fine. It, it's it, today's the day to do. Now, Drew, what? What do you mean that's your own boost? Your own boost for what? Or I think I know the rules on Chatterbox. No free plugs. No free promotions. <laughs> are you trying to get me to break the rules, Drew? Rules are the rules, Kenner. Yeah, nonetheless. But uh, yeah, that that was Drew's. Uh, Drew Garrison's. That was his personal boost uh, right there. He he's going to be the Bengal savior. Anytime I I'm a little too harsh about the Bengals. He's supposed to be the one that comes in to save the day. He's supposed to neutralize the program so I don't scare everyone off on chatter. So, but let's get to the call. That I mean, Jerry, how are you, sir? Hey, Welcome. What gentlemen. am I? What, what am I a hypocrite about? What are you talking about? So, so you were you when we were talking about whether you should uh, give the baseball back. Yeah, for a, you, a meaningful home run. That was last week's segment, calling, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those, those of us, those of us who would force the team to give us something in order to get the ball back. You were calling us bad fans. However, in the case you were just talking about with NIL, well, you know, if the, if the family pays for this one of a kind card, right? Yeah. If it wasn't the kid, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, you, you should give it back. So to me, that's being a little hypocritical. I mean, they paid for it. Why shouldn't they keep it? I mean, to be honest. I agree um, with you, but I don't think you heard what I said correctly. I never said they, I, I didn't say they should have given it back. Okay, but they but paid said, for it. It's not like Shohei Otani said, "Hey, whoever gives kid. whoever gives me a hundred bucks, I'll hit a home run ball to you." It's not even close <laughs> to being the same thing. Well, no, it, it, it's all about do you support your team or not. Now, me personally, I keep I'm keeping the ball. I'm keeping that card. You I'm should keep the card. It, you right? paid for the card. The ball is not yours. I'm keeping the ball too. It's the same principle. I paid for the ticket. I got the ball. You want the where ball, on the ticket does it say? It's not that hard to figure out. Uh, you got your own balls, don't you? You don't need you don't need to to, to take Shohei Otani's home run ball. Why do you need that? If the if the if, if baseball says hey that's our ball, it's their ball. But they're not saying that right now. It's not written in the in the contract when you buy the ticket. So does it say the ball's yours? That, I'm, I'm genuinely ball. asking. Does it say that the ball's yours on the ticket? Souvenir. Oh, well, well, like I said. Right. But I also said last week too. That's baseball's problem. Baseball should, you know, it's their league. Change the rules. They don't care about the fans, anyways. Change the <laughs> rules. All right, and just say, hey, if any ball that goes into the stands is yours at the discretion of the team. If there's some kind of you know monumental ball that's hit, we have the right to go and say, hey, that's that's my ball. That's all. Well, until they do that, and I said you're a bad fan if you. And and again, so much not so much about the team; it's about the player. If the player says, "Hey, that ball means a lot to me. I want to give that to my dad. I want to give that to my mom. I want to give that to Pappy. I want to give that to to my mama. I I just feel like it's right. You don't. uh, Yeah, I don't know. Everyone calls everyone something different. All right, bottom mi abuela, mi abuelo. You know, I'm just saying. Like, I can't believe you're going to hold that hostage. You're going to ruin a great family moment. Just so you can have a ball that's going to go get dusty oh, in your garage? If he wants the ball back so bad to get to his abuela, sign a bat and give me the bat. So you're, but that's why you're a bad fan. You're holding it hostage. You're not a how good bad fan. Do you want to get, how bad do you want to give that ball to your grandma, Justin? If you want to give that ball bad enough, you'll sign a bat. Maybe give me a couple tickets. You know, we'll work it out. That's all I'm saying. I mean, if that's now, what I had to do, if I back. had to deal with jerk fans like you, I mean, I guess that's what I would have to do. I probably couldn't afford it, though. Not on my salary. It's the barter system. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, I charge you double. That's fine. Right, that's so, fine. So on the draft, I think I think the Browns. Honestly, I, the pick that Mel Kiper had for Kansas City, I think that pick that that Leggett kid would be great for you guys. You guys need another receiver, whether you want to believe it or not, right? I mean, Amari Cooper's a good number two. He's not a number one. And Jerry Judy, man, I'm sorry. You're going to find out he's not that good either. You guys really could get someone like that Leggett kid would be a really good pick for you guys, I think. And as far as Kev Steelers go, I think they should be looking interior offensive line like their center, right? That, yeah, that's that what they said. Uh, that's who that's who Kuiper said they're getting uh, uh, the center from Duke. So. Yeah, that Barton kid. Yeah, that's a good. That'd be a good pick for you all for sure. If not, you'd need a tackle. I mean, one of the two, interior or offensive line or, or tackle, I think would be a good fit for the Steelers. Black and yellow. So, it, it, and the hate man, for I'm, Jerry Judy, huh? The hate for Jerry Judy. Look, Jerry yeah. Judy, there's potential there. I'm not going to sit here and say uh, he's going to come in and save the day. But 
Um, they also didn't have to give uh, give up a whole lot uh, to get him, well, and they didn't have to spend a whole lot. So if he ends up uh, producing, then the Browns will have one of the deeper wide receiver receiving cores in the division. Uh, and if not, well, they'll just continue being one of the highest scoring teams in football with one of the worst receiving cores in football, like they've been doing in recent years. So, but I agree with well, you. They do need. They've not been good. Look, the Bengals are really good at drafting wide receivers. The Browns are not. That's why they had to go. I mean, they had to give up that fifth rounder years ago to go get Amari Cooper. They've had to trade to go get OBJ. Uh, they had to trade to get Jerry Judy. I mean, the David Bell thing has not worked. I like Tillman, but that hasn't worked. I like Tillman. I like the original pick. Tillman has not worked. The Browns um, are not good at drafting wide receivers. So I agree with you, uh, Jerry. If that's if, but again, they don't have a first round pick, so it don't matter. Uh, but that's a talented receiver that you talked about that the Chiefs uh, are taking, according to Mel Kiper. Yeah, well, I mean, if he falls into the second round, maybe you trade up. Or there'll be other dudes in the second round, too. The kid from North Carolina uh, has got a lot of speed. Um, there's a couple other dudes in the second round you might be able to get, too. So the kid from Florida, Pearsall, is that his name? He might, he'll he be available then. So, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, you guys don't, let's be honest, you guys don't have a lot of needs on defense. You've got a great defense. So that you is- need to be picking for offense and just stack it. Stacking dudes. They just need stacking dudes. I like it. But all right, hypocrite yeah. Jerry, bad fan Jerry, appreciate <laughs> you. Great fan Jerry, and everybody else listening, be doing the same thing. Quit kidding yourself. Mm, hypocrites, all you bad fans. I mean, who needs uh, who needs enemies when you got fans like that? I'm just saying. Cash me out. Kev said Browns is the Browns. <laughs> Browns is one of the many teams that has knocked you out of the playoffs in recent years. Just throwing that out it's there. All good. I'm just it's throwing all that good. out there. Just throwing that out there. All good. Brad uh, says uh, Browns have a semi high end wide receiver they drafted last year. Didn't get much play in Tillman. Uh, he says Tillman will come around. I hope so. I liked the when they got Tillman out of the draft. I really liked him. I was like, oh, that's going to be a good one. I like David Bell. Uh, David Bell, the receiver. Um, I like David Bell, the manager. By the way, so relax. Now, I've got, come, I've come around. Buddies. I told you, me and David Bell, we're buddies now. But it wasn't it wasn't uh, the best to start. But we're good now. We good. But uh, man, David Bell, this is gonna be an interesting year for him, the Reds manager on this end. They're six and five. They win one, one or two, and then they lose one. Then they win one or two, and then they lose one. Like I'm very fascinated to see what the narrative. I mean, this is one hell of a quick transition here out of this NFL stuff. But uh, Jerry, I don't even know what I teased. Did we tease anything for this no. segment? No, I didn't think so. Uh, you know, but. The, the David Bell stuff, I'm very fascinated to see where the narrative goes with him by the end of the year. I really am. Because, look, I like David Bell. I remember when they signed him, I was a big fan of that at first. I know, look, it came down to him and Joe Girardi, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. So they were kind of giving him – Girardi was in Cincinnati. They were giving him a tour. Uh, you know, Schlemmer and I were doing the show at the time, and we were getting texts uh, from people that, you know, Girardi was, was in town. And then out of nowhere, boom, David Bell's the guy. So it wasn't as flashy of a get. And by the way, you know, bottom line is the Reds have had issues. I, I don't think they've had a managerial issue in quite some time as much as I complained about them early. I think that was just a lot of losing early on because they didn't have a lot of good pieces. Well, they have good pieces now, and we can't always because – look, there's no, there's no such thing as a 100% healthy baseball team out there. I know that they're without Matt McClain and others. I'm not piling on David Bell at this moment. All I'm saying is, is the door is starting to crack to where we're only 10 games in. I'm not going to overreact to anything or 11 games in. But if this type of play continues, win one or two, lose one, win one or two, lose one, 500 ball club. I know that's what Vegas had their win loss total at, but they have to find a way to be able to string together, you know, a good week, two weeks of baseball. Mm-hmm. This inconsistent start. And my, my fear is, is this is who they are. This is a team that is made up a lot of second and third year players. This is a team that is made up of a lot of, you know, it's a young roster. And when you get a young roster, you get these types of results. So I think we got so excited about last year thinking that this team was ready to take the league by storm. Uh, we've seen f- uh, flashes of it. I mean, look, bottom line is is my take on Ellie De La Cruz is so wild because the guy is so damn good that even when he plays bad, he's playing good. The, the talk of Ellie De La Cruz is how poor he's been this season, but yet he's been on base in every damn game. Coming off what two games ago, that inside the park home run and the you know the two home run game, the guy just finds ways. Even when he's not hitting the ball well, still finds a way to get on base. When he gets on base, he's stealing. When he gets on, he he wreaks havoc. Like I know he's not doing great defensively, but there's not a game that we have seen from him where he can't hit, he can't field, he can't make an impact on the base pass. He makes an impact no matter what in some capacity. There's not a lot of players that could do that, um, and we're just seeing him continue to develop, and he's continuing to develop while playing at a you know high level. So I'll, I'll take that as far as that's concerned concern um slick uh slick on youtube says reds reds have an injury issue 
Uh, he also says Browns need a quarterback. Let's <laughs> talk about the Reds' injuries, okay? Let's, let's just talk about something positive. <laughs> Uh, no, Brad says we want them to be the Diamondbacks from last year, but they just uh, don't uh, play hard enough uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, Nate also said Cleveland is Cleveland. Why everyone piling up? I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's Jerry's fault. Jerry had to call in, the horrible fan Jerry that he is. Ay, ay, ay. Who's the most surprising team three weeks into the season of baseball? Is it your team? Is it your Guardians? Is I would it? definitely have them up there. Uh, I know this sounds wild because it is the Yankees, but the Yankees what were the first team to 10 wins. I mean, the Yankees have come out just dominating. I mean, off of last year, how bad they were yeah. last year. Like, they're reminding folks <laughs> who they are. Um, on the flip side of that, I Pirates. would say – Someone said Pirates. That's fair. I would say the Astros as well, how poor they played so far. Super So early. you're saying how – oh, surprising like the opposite. Yeah, both, one. both. Whatever, okay, yeah. Whatever oh, that's a good one. Both. Um, the Pir- I'm getting a lot of Pirates. So Craig Sandlin says the Pirates. Scott Campbell chiming in with the Pirates as well uh, as far as that's concerned. You know, it's fascinating. You look at the – I don't put a whole lot of standings early. I mean, you know what's, you know what's weird? The um, It's actually kind of sad, actually. We talk about how poor the Reds have been in the month of April, but, you know, they're usually not that bad to start the first 10 days of the season. You know how many – I check my Facebook memories all the time, and almost it seems like every day that I've checked my Facebook memories as of late – Reds are four and two. Have they changed how you've thought about this team coming in? And then you've seen the train wreck of seasons that they'd go on to have. So same story. I'm not putting stock into the the records early on, but no. Look, the Yankees jumping out to that ten and two start doesn't mean anything. But you look, it means something because you want to start out right positively. You know, if you're two and ten, you can't say the record doesn't matter because that's not that's not good. You don't want to be two and ten. You know, the Reds right now. You look at where they sit. Uh, you know, the what they're six and five right now. Uh, but you know the Pirates right there at nine and three up there at the top. Pirates were the hottest teams to start, uh, as far as that's concerned. But will the division continue to shake out this way? Pirates went on a little hot run last year too before they kind of fizzled out when it was all said and done, as did the Reds. So we'll see what ultimately ends up happening. The Cardinals, oh the poor Cardinals, they're on they're on bad times. Oh, six, oh. And, six and seven. I, I saw you know we're not the same. The Reds and Cardinals were just not the same. You know. There was an article that was out today that was just talking about people. Compl- there was uh, tickets were a dollar, <laughs> and they only they only had thirty thousand fans at their stadium. Only they're used to selling that place mm-hmm. out. They're used to so oh poor Cardinals. Those a players, they're, they're playing in an echo chamber. They just you know they, you could hear a pin drop in front of those thirty thousand fans. Yeah, um, we're not the Reds fans and Cardinals fans aren't the same. A dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, Mo- Scott Campbell says, yeah, Nate, I agree. Yeah, he says Pirates did this last year. They fizzled out. Um, Scott said the Pirates, but he goes, the most surprising team not winning right now is the Mariners. That's a good mm, one, too. That is a good one. Scott, thank you for that one. Yeah, the Mariners are another one. Dodgers 10-5, and five, you know, in, sitting at the top of the West. The Pirates 9-3, and three, top of the Central. The Braves, of course, just doing their thing um, as far as that's concerned. You look at the West, the Rangers 6-5 and five to the West is a very average start to the season. Uh, nonetheless, and of course, your Guardians at eight and three. Uh, let's, let's talk about. I want to talk about your Guardians. We're gonna do a little cap or no cap when we come back, cool. and your Guardians are a part of that as well. So we'll get to that when we come back. It's the Kenner and Kev Show, fourteen ten ESPN Radio, Chatterbox Sports. We'll be right back. Jerry. Uh. It's the Justin Kinner Show with Kev Nash on 1410 ESPN Radio. ESPN 1410 Wing AM Weather. Our forecast, rain likely in 59 tonight. Showers breezy 69 tomorrow, Friday. Showers and breezy in a high of 57. I'm Rick Schrempf for 1410 ESPN Radio. Ohio's public schools are safe, welcoming learning environments where everyone can thrive. No exceptions. Thanks to the nearly 120,000 public school educators in the Ohio Education Association. We are dedicated professionals who deserve respect, a living wage, and a seat at the table when decisions are made. And we're using our united voice to demand the supports and resources our students need to succeed. Because in Ohio, public education matters. Sick and tired of achy joints? Dread the idea of surgery? You need to call QC Kinetics today. Hey, it's Keith Byers. Listen, the state of healthcare is always changing. The old ideals like steroids and surgery are no longer your only options. 
Regenerative medicine at QC Connects is transforming lives with innovative, non-surgical, drug-free treatments that deliver lasting results. Knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain, from arthritis or injury, don't let this pain keep you from living your best life. QC Kinetics advanced state-of-the-art treatments harness and direct your body's natural ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Make 2024 the year you reclaim your mobility, reclaim your independence, walk and run and play and live without the danger and trauma of surgery. And without harmful drugs, call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. 937-936-0325. Hey, let me tell you about the advantages of driving with my friends at Cordell Transportation. First of all, for the new year, they're offering brand new equipment to drive. They've purchased new equipment, and not a lot of people could say that, but they've got it, and they're ready to roll with you. Cordell Transportation is offering an incredible $5,000 sign-on bonus paid over 18 months. If you're an experienced Class A CDL driver looking for excellent benefits, home daily, dedicated lanes, no-touch freights, then apply today online at CordellTransportation.com. Cordell Transportation driven to succeed. If you need new roofing, siding or gutters, skylights or patio enclosures, if you're a homeowner or business and need someone you can trust, don't take a chance. Enhance with Lance. Lance Roofing and Siding has been satisfying customers since 1993 and hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. See Lance Roofing and Siding at their new location at 6903 Dayton Springfield Road in Enon. Call for a free estimate at 864-2722. That's 864-2722. Online at Lance Roofing. Everyday Cintas service reps help businesses get ready for the workday. They provide freshly laundered workwear delivered every week. Mats, mops, restroom and cleaning supplies, first aid and safety products to help your employees stay safe. They even test and inspect fire extinguishers and emergency lights. Cintas helps keep your business running smoothly. See what Cintas can do for you. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready. And get ready for the workday. Your gas light's on. We need to fill up. Gas around here is too expensive. Don't drive all over searching for the lowest prices. Just download the free Upside app and get cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. I've already made around 200 bucks. You can make that kind of cash back just for buying gas? I'm stopping now to download Upside and fill up my tank. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card. Download the free Upside app now and use promo code GIFT for an extra 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill up. That's promo code GIFT. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper and you can get it online? Go to hymns.com slash joy. Through Hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, and the process is 100% online. To start your free online visit, go to hymns.com slash joy. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Did you know Chevrolet of Troy is offering savings up to $10,000 off new Chevys and the lowest prices in the area? We take pride in being your premium dealership to buy your new Chevy for the absolute lowest price guaranteed. Over 100 brand new Chevys to choose from. Customer service is our top priority and we make financing easy. Being a full service, state of the art premium dealership makes Chevrolet of Troy your absolute best choice. For your new Chevy, 1375 South Market Street and online at Chevrolet com. Free battery testing, free battery charging, and replacement batteries that fit your needs. That's what makes AutoZone America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Make sure you've liked and followed the Justin Kinner Show on Facebook. Enter a contest. Weigh in on the latest sports debates. Plus, you can watch Kinner and Kev weekdays at 3 p.m. Yeah, as if listening to them isn't bad enough. Now you can see them. Reds, Bengals, Browns, Buckeyes, and more. Follow the Justin Kinner Show on Facebook.
And we are back. It's the Kenner and Kev Show, Dayton's ESPN Radio, 1410 Wing AM. Uh, when is the WNBA draft? Uh, next week. Look. I think it's next week or whatever. Next week, week after, something like that. But uh, the Indiana Fever have the number one overall pick, and that's where Caitlin, Monday. So, wow. So, less, not two weeks. It's less than a week. Monday, tax day. So, the Caitlin Clark effect that we just watched kind of take over college basketball, about to take over the WNBA. So, the Indiana Fever has the number one overall pick. Um, and the WNBA has laid out the schedule already, even before the draft. And the w, uh, the Indiana Fever, 40 games this season. 36 of their 40 games are on national TV. And Caitlin Clark is why. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, yeah. Didn't get enough of Caitlin Clark, but that's what's wild too. So their season ends, and then it goes right into the WNBA as we mm-hmm. talked about. I wonder if she's going to do that three on three league. Oh, the big three. I doubt it. I mean, you know, selfishly of us, we want to see her play, and you know, what I'm saying we they talk about the five million dollars, but I mean, I just think like she's going to use. Hey, well, I'm not a prop. I'm not a tool to be boosting up your brand. I'm here to play basketball. Yada yada yada. I think that's like the route she's going to go. Because I know a lot of people think like, oh man, this would be a huge failure for her. If she goes out there and gets abused. Uh, uh, no kidding. Like everybody in the big three, they're former NBA players that are like six five, that were wings in the NBA. That like Stephen Jackson used to car- guard this dude named Kobe Bryant. Ever heard of him? And do a pretty good job. What do you think he's going to do against Caitlin Clark? Like, do they, they really play that hard in the three on three though? I mean, they they will in that sense. I feel like it'd be the opposite. Like, like she needs to be good so that they get eyes on their product too. I, I don't know. It's only be ten, five million for ten games, nonetheless. But oof. So, I don't know. Five million for ten games. That's it. Go tough it out. Go tough it out. <laughs> five million for ten games. Uh, like, what's the highest uh, salary in the WNBA? Like two hundred fifty thousand or yeah, something I like think, that. Uh... It's not a million. No, no, definitely not. I think Asia Wilson has that highest contract. So, nonetheless. But, all right, let's do a little cap or no cap here on the Kinner and Kev show. It's time for everyone's favorite segment. Cap or no cap? Cap the rules. Ah, yes, you will throw out a question. We will answer it in cap or no cap fashion. Cap is a lie. No cap is the truth. All right, cap or no cap. We saw record ratings for women's college basketball this season with Caitlin Clark going to the WNBA. We'll see those ratings drop next season. Cap or no cap? Uh, I'm going to go with cap. Cap, yeah. Uh, I don't think they're going to drop. I mean, you look at the star power that's also coming back. I mean, South Carolina's bringing everybody back besides Camilla Cardoza. Uh, everybody's familiar with Paige Beckers. Everybody's familiar with Juju Watkins. Like, once the season starts to get rolling again, I think that the fan bases are going to come in and tune in for this next big wave of college basketball players on the women's side. And like I've been saying all season, all the records that Kalen is breaking right now, awesome and happy to see it. And I've been calling it for a while that she was the best player in college basketball. Juju Watkins is coming for all those records because she was second in the nation in scoring at 29 <clears throat> points per game as a true freshman. So she's coming for all those records. So when she starts, you know, slowly but surely climbing that that record meter, people are going to be tuning in to see how far she can go. See, I just don't think it's I, – I say I, – I think the – I don't know if they'll plummet into the ground, but they won't come close to this, in my opinion. Look, the record, Plum just set that record years ago, and the ratings weren't this. I don't think it's the record that people were tuning in for. It was a, uh, I mean, it's the the same thing with Steph Curry. It's just the style of play. It's just a different style of play that, you know, everyone shoots threes, but Caitlin and him have a very similar style Mm -hmm. where they're just kind of fun to watch off the ball. It's not just that they get shots off. It's the way that they get shots off to create their shot coming off screens and everything else. I think Caitlin Clark was, I mean, look, South Carolina, a lot of people tuned in, yes, because I think it was because they were the undefeated team going up against Caitlin Clark, but I think she was the the straw, if you will, that stirred the drink. I think that they go down. There's been good women's college basketball players for years. There's been a lot of characters. I, I've told you of how much I like Mulkey and I like Don mm-hmm. Staley and obviously Gino and all the, and everybody, but yeah, I think she was the, the interest. I think that, I mean, 
Like you're already seeing the impact there. There's been a lot of good women's college basketball players that didn't come close to moving the needle the way she has. I mean, Griner was a fantastic college mm-hmm. women's basketball player. I know when you think of her now, it creates a stir right off the bat. But the bottom line is, is her coming out of college, she was the most unique women's college basketball player, even more so over Plum because she just looked different than every other player out there. Um, and with that being said, that didn't move the needle either. And it didn't move the needle in the WNBA. I think not only is Caitlin irreplaceable as far as that goes. I think you're seeing that already in the WNBA. So many good players have gone to the WNBA and you don't even hear about them anymore. I think I, I just think there's too many examples of things that have just elevated because of her. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. I'm very interested to see how that's going to be uh, when it's all said and done. But When you say plummet, you mean like fall off a cliff? I mean, what's falling up for 18 mil to watch a championship game? What do you think? If it's South Carolina and uh, UConn in the championship game next year, it's not 18 mil. No, I, I would imagine like probably around 13, 13 million. See, losing 5 mil, I think that's plummeting. I could be. I, I don't know though. But like, I'm not like we, a I ratings guess we, aficionado. Yeah, I, I would. I would probably have to know what the ratings were over a five-year period. Obviously, it was up from last year's championship game with LSU and Iowa. This this year's was up. So I mean, I mean, you probably are right. I mean, like the impact of her and then all the other surrounding factors. You know, with you know, what I'm saying we we sit here and act like race does not play a a, a major factor in this, but like it did play a, a factor in this. I mean, you know, so I mean, when you don't have like a quote unquote villain in LSU and all the players and the coaches in that situation steaming this thing up, and then you have you know, what I'm saying the hero trying to slay the Goliath and things of that nature, you're probably right. Ken and Cap, fourteen ten ESPN Radio, Cap or no Cap. Mel Kuyper had his uh, mock draft put out earlier. We touched on it. He had four QBs going in the top five. Cap or no cap? Four QBs will go in the top five of the NFL draft here in a few weeks. No cap. No cap. No cap at all. Uh, I can do you one better. I think it's five is going to go, man. Like, teams are so quarterback needy and so quarterback hungry that they start reaching on guys. We've seen it year after year that uh, teams reach for guys that are projected to be second-round picks, um, and they go in the first round. Uh, that team that comes to mind mostly is the Pittsburgh Steelers when they drafted Kenny Pickett in the first round. So I'm never going to go. Uh, for five to go, that means Arizona would have to trade out of that spot, and then the Chargers would have to tra- tra- trade out of that spot. Three – I can't, I'm going to say cap. I do not think four of the top five will be QBs. Two of the top five already have QBs and Kyler Murray with the Cardinals, Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Now, they very well could trade those, no doubt about it. But at the same time, there is that thing. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr., to me, is why the Cardinals do stay at four. They could get another receiver if they trade back and all that stuff, but you have a chance to get a generational wide receiver. I know we're so bored with all the coverage of Marvin Harrison Jr. that you start to see the other reports come out that, you know, this guy's equally as good, if not better, and maybe very, very well may be. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think you can't fall for the media just getting bored with hyping up the same guys. For I mean, everyone's been saying Marvin Harrison could have been the number one wide receiver last year. Um, I, I just think the Cardinals stay put. I think that the Chargers could be one that could potentially look to move back. Uh, but nonetheless, I guess that still could lead to four of the top five. But I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the Cardinals and Chargers, ultimately, you don't usually see a lot of movement. There's always a lot of speculated movement. <laughs> right, it usually right, right, doesn't right. end up being the case. We'll see what happens when it's all said and done. All right, your Pirates cap are sitting at the top Guardians. of the AL Central. Pirates, my fault. I didn't mean to say Pirates. Sorry. <laughs> your Guardians are sitting atop the AL Central, 8-3. and three. They've been one of the more interesting teams in baseball uh, to start the season. Obviously, they lose Shane Bieber for the remainder of the year. Uh, just a horrible injury. One of many big-name pitchers uh, to be out uh, for significant time due to injuries. But uh, cap or no cap, the Guardians' success to start is sustainable. Are they, can, are they capable of winning the AL Central, cap or no cap? Um... No cap, no cap, because the AL Central is just hot garbage. It's it's just it's just bad. If people want to talk about the whatever division is bad. It, nobody is bad is the AL Central, and the fact that the Guardians have a very good pitching staff. Obviously, losing Shane Bieber definitely hurts. You know, Tristan McKenzie is working his way back. He uh, finally pitched a pretty good game. Um, not this past game, but I believe it was on Monday versus the White Sox. I believe he pitched um, the home opener for the Guardians. But their pitching staff will be able to keep them in contention to win the division. So, yeah, they can win the AL Central for sure. Yeah, I just... Again, baseball is just one of those weirds. I mean, last year the Diamondbacks, no one was giving them a shot. No one was giving the Reds a shot. So I don't really care about preseason expectations, spring training expectations, and all that. It just comes down to sometimes things just click, and things are clicking for the Guardians right now. The way it's clicking for the Pirates, the way it's clicking for the Yankees. Yankees are set though. They're like they they're living. <laughs> up. They're 
We said they were surprising earlier because they're actually living up to expectations. Right. Um, I don't think the Reds aren't living up to expectations. I think the Reds are just they're they're doing what they're. I mean, they're a young team. They're inconsistent. I think we're going to get a lot of this. We're going to see a lot of really really good weeks, and we're going to have some weeks and games where it's like, oh man, I think that we have an issue here. Uh, we'll see what happens when it's all uh, said and done. But I think yeah, I'll, I'll say that it is sustainable. I'll I'll say cap. No, no cap. What the hell? What is it? What am I trying to say? See, we don't do this game enough. I, there's the one time a week where I get to try and be cool, and I'm screwing it all We're up. You're not cool anymore. So I said the Guardians can sustain the success, cap or no cap. So I am saying no cap. They Correct. can't sustain it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, we're going to find out a lot about the Guardians after they finish up this series versus the White Sox because on Friday and Sunday they got the Yankees coming to Cleveland. Mm. How about this one? Cap or no cap? Freshman quarterback Julian Sand is in the mix for the starting quarterback job. According to Ryan Day, the freshman QB had his black stripe removed uh, during practice this week. Uh, cap or no cap? Will Howard will be the starting quarterback for the Buckeyes this season? Um, No cap. I mean, you better be. I mean, you have been a three-year starter at Kansas State. You have all the experience in the world, and the guys behind you have very little to no experience. So, like, that alone should give you the leg up. Yeah, granted, Sane and all the other true freshmen are learning the offense just like you are, but guess what? The product that Devin Brown put out there on the field was not up to snuff last year, even though it was very limited snaps. You better be the guy. I mean, this is your opportunity. I mean, you played at Kansas State with a couple guys that are going to go pro. A lot of those dudes are on the defensive side of the ball, not the offensive side. You're not going to play with this amount of weapons ever again in your life. At, so you better make the most of this opportunity and take advantage. So I'm going to say he's going to be the starting QB. Yeah, well, Howard, I, I do believe, no cap, I do believe he'll be the quarterback. Look, I'm not saying, look, he's not good enough a quarterback to go to in the portal and say, this is your job. You are the starter. There's no way you're not the starter. But at the same time, what makes this dynamic interesting is the the NIL is the you know you you he was given that money to come be the starting quarterback to come save the Buckeyes from the quarterback mediocrity that they experienced in this past year with Kyle McCord and then that disastrous uh you know what what bowl game were they in the meaningless bowl game what meaningless bowl <laughs> game were they in uh dang which is one Shaw still mad he never called in he didn't interact with the show today Shaw, he, he's he's pouting Shaw's pouting was it the Sugar Bowl. No, it wasn't. Cotton Bowl? Cotton Bowl. It was yeah, it was bowl. one of the yeah. meaningless bowl games. It was not a college football playoff game, nonetheless. But uh, uh, Drew Garrison said, uh, Will Howard is Kyle McCord with longer hair. Drew Garrison is also a Michigan fan. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Drew Garrison also says, Talk about Michigan just bullying Ohio State for three straight years. Uh, Drew and Drew Garrison and Shaw, the tag team champions. Shawski. Hmm. Uh-uh-uh. Uh, how about, so Drew did say this a little bit ago. He said, so Drew is from the Miami Valley, apparently. Okay. Where are you from, Drew? Just uh, just out of curiosity. But he says, me, Kenner, and Kev against Trace, Reed, and Elliott in three-on-three basketball, Dayton Ooh. versus Hamilton. Ooh. Pay me $5 million for 10 minutes. <laughs> man, I've retired from hooping a long time ago, man. I've been retired for like three years, dude. The game retired me. Yes. But you played with the Harlem Globetrotters. I did. See, we have a new audience. Now, I could show. I think one of these days I'm going to have to show. I was two for three when I got to. So the Harlem Globetrotters, this would have been in 20. This was before the whole world shut down. So it would have been, no, it would have been, what, 2019, I guess. 19, yeah. It would have been New Year's Eve. Uh, Harlem Globetrotters every year come to the Nutter Center. Uh, and one year they reached out and asked me to play for them. So I did. I look like Butterbean out there. That's I mean, the fat guy wearing the red, white, and blue trunks and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. just. But I was so nervous. I couldn't warm up. And I, so I got there early thinking I could warm up, but it was the autograph session and stuff. They said, you go get in line. I'm like, no one wants my damn autograph. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe you guys are asking me to play. So I went and sat down, didn't warm up. The first shot I took, bang, buried it. Now, some said I traveled. No, nah, we were clean. It's NBA rules. Yeah. <laughs> it's scripted. It's fake. For all my people that are tuning in on Chatterbox right now, new audience and everything like that, one of us played college basketball, and it's not who you think it is. <laughs> it was for a, it was for a uh, branch campus. It doesn't count. It was, does count. It doesn't count. You got a jersey and everything. Played for a, one of the fly, few flyers I actually liked, Mr. Mark Ashman. Shout out to Mr. Mark Ashman. Nonetheless, Kenner and Cap for oh, he's from Miamisburg. He says the Berg, eh? Seinfeld night at Yankee Stadium. What's your favorite promotion that you've ever seen at a game? We'll talk about that when we come back. Seinfeld night at Yankee Stadium. 
I want this promotional giveaway so bad. I want it so bad. I'll tell you what it is next. In this market, you'll find Fisher Investments is different than other money managers. Different how? Aren't we all just looking for the hottest stocks? Nope. We use diversified strategies to position our clients' portfolios for their long-term goals. You don't just provide cookie-cutter portfolios? No. We tailor our clients' portfolios to their goals and needs. But you still sell investments that generate high commissions for you, right? No, we don't sell commission-based products. We're a fiduciary, the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. It means we're obligated to act in our client's best interest. So when do you make more money? Only when your clients make more money? Yep, we have one transparent management fee structured, so we do better when our clients do better. Sounds like you really look out for your clients. We do, because our priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly, different money management. Investments in securities involve the risk of loss. Stop at Menards and check out our selection of high-quality Master Force tools. Easily take on your outdoor cleaning projects with Master Force. Master Force pressure washers have the power you need to make short work of any job. Pick up a Master Force 3000 PSI electric pressure washer on sale through April 14th. Save big money on Master Force tools and check out our flyer on Menards.com for more great deals going on now. Save big money at Menards. Listen to this station anytime, anywhere on Odyssey. Odyssey is your new audio home for all the music, news, sports, and podcasts that matter to you. Odyssey. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Hi, this is Michael, your service manager at Dave Arbogast Buick GMC in Troy, Ohio. I am inviting you to give us an opportunity to earn your business. We have expanded our hours to better meet your needs. We are now open until 6 p.m. during the week and 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. on Saturdays. We service all makes and models. We offer convenient shuttle service as well as pickup and delivery. Please visit us on the web at arbogastbuickgmc.com or in person. Exit 69 on I-75. Look for the giant American flag. I hope to see you soon. There's never any FOMO with the iHeartRadio app. You won't ever have to miss out on your favorite shows and contests with this radio station again. Radio 24-7-365. 365. We're here when you want us. Stay connected and listen anywhere when you download the free iHeartRadio app. Don't get stuck gearing up for spring while everyone else is enjoying the warm weather. Invisible Fence Brand works in any season, giving your pet the freedom they deserve. Now, visit InvisibleFence.com to learn more. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief. America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-709-7022. 800-709-7022. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com.
Ken on Cap 1410 ESPN Radio. So Seinfeld Night is coming on July 5th at okay. Yankee Stadium. The George Costanza bobblehead. Love it. Love it. That's pretty cool. I have to find a way to get to Yankee Stadium to get a George Costanza bobblehead. That is my favorite promotional giveaway right there. That's not bad. I do like the uh, the City Connect jerseys giveaways. We had the what the who do we just had the bobblehead giveaway for? That's right. Uh, which oh the Matt McLean one. That's not who was just given away. I don't know. I think it was Fraley. Either way, the City Connect bobbleheads are the, nice. I like the, obviously because the jerseys themselves. But it's your favorite promotional giveaway at a game for any sport really that you could Man, think of. Man, that's tough. Um, I thought that the Kelsey stuff was pretty cool because you got the two for one uh, with the Cavs. You got Travis and Jason Kelsey bobblehead night Big up Eagles there Eagles and Chiefs fans. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you that Jason and Travis went to my high school, Cleveland Heights High mm. School Tigers? That's pretty cool. And, you know, uh, $1 beer night is always a good time. Yeah. Uh, the... The Marty Brenneman, his final game at GABP, the coolest thing ever was they, they got rid of the delay for that game, 700 did, and they gave out those the radios. Well, nice. Yeah, so they you literally everyone, it was so cool because it was Marty's last game. I remember I went to that game. I went by myself. I just went and sat by myself. Uh, it was kind of chilly that day, so I wore shorts as usual. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I had the radio and just listening to Marty – you know, call the game, call his final game. And I'll never rem- – it was so fitting that it was Joey Votto up to bat. A chance – I can't remember if it was uh, – they were down to run or what. He had a chance to tie it up or win the game or something, but, you know, he struck out. That was the final call. It was a strikeout. It was a Joey Votto strikeout was the final call of Marty Brenneman's Hall of Fame legendary broadcasting career. Uh, but I'm that, sure that was cool. I'm enthused about Votto not coming in clutch. I mean, it was fitting. It was the most fitting thing ever. As far as I'm concerned. But, yes, the radio giveaway was pretty neat um, as far as that's concerned. Uh, I also want to give a shout-out um, to Chatterbox Sports. I want to make sure that uh, we, we give this individual a, a shout-out. Let me make sure that I have this pulled up. Um, so we do this you know, uh, off the bench uh, with Trace Fowler. They've done a very good job of not swearing on the air. <laughs> so I want to make sure that intern Lindsay gets a shout-out. Now, they it, was, it did not make the radio airwaves today. But uh, intern Lindsay was the first person on the show to say a curse word over the radio. Wow. So shout out to the intern. The, I mean, she doesn't say much, you know, she doesn't say much. But when she, when she did speak today, she made it count. And that's what I respect. So shout out to Lindsay. I thought that was awesome. I wish there could be more swearing on the damn radio. I really do. I really do. And it would not have even been the worst thing that I said on the show today, what she said. Definitely so, not. So, you know. You put cheese on it. That's all. <laughs> you know, Nate says, shout out Lindsay. Yes, everyone give give Lindsay a little shout out in the chat here. Uh, but uh, the, yes, the first one. Potty mouth. Nonetheless, uh, as we close up. Shaw should hang out. <laughs> yeah, people are going to get to know Shaw. Drew Garrison and Shaw are going to be really good fans. Uh, it's going to be a truncated version, but a couple, uh, you know, a little quick trip around the association. Some NBA headlines. Indeed, indeed. You talked about Giannis's injury uh, last night versus the game with the Celtics, but something else crazy happened in that game. There were only two free throws shot the entire game. The Bucks shot two, the Celtics shot zero. That's the fewest free throw attempts in an NBA game since 1983. Did you watch that game? I did. How, so was it a lot of, th- what was the three yes. total? So it was it's, a, it was, it's it was a typical threes. NBA game. <laughs> it was a whole bunch of threes. I mean, you look at Celtics, the Celtics do nothing but shoot threes. Um, so and then uh, they were like doing a, a staggered lineup with the Celtics because the Celtics are far <laughs> ahead of everybody. So Tatum plays some minutes, Brown plays some minutes, but like they never like played their normal ro- uh, normal minutes during that game. So you know it was a runaway for the Bucks majority of the game. So it was little resistance. And they were even talking about um, during halftime. This is the matchup of the one and two seeds in the East, and tickets were as low as nineteen dollars. You know, um, two months ago, the tickets were two hundred fifty dollars. But since the Celtics had taken off, and then the Bucks have fell off, people said there's no need to go to the game. You mean an NBA game with two high seeds not giving an effort in the regular season? <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about a, a rare, uh, you know, sighting? I mean, stop me from going to a game now. Uh, next up, but the zero free throws. I mean, you 
That is pretty wild. We've Crazy. talked about, uh, you know, we talked about some Dayton games this year where they were plus 20 in free throw differential, which I always think is why. There was a game where they shot 28 and their opponent shot three, and I thought that was crazy uh, to me. But to get zero free throw attempts in a game is pretty wild. Even officials have to sit back and say, well, hey, we got to at least get them to the charity stripe a couple times <laughs> just to look like we earned our paycheck tonight. But uh, nonetheless. Jack and I'm nothing but threes. They, uh, Celtics shot 52 threes, 17 of 52 from three-point land, and the Bucks were 17 of 36. Uh, on to number two. The Knicks are now the number three seed in the East. One game of the Bucks for the second seed with three games to play. Are they better without Randall? Yes. They play a very fast-paced game. Uh, also, um, Mitchell Robinson has come back. Hardenstein is out there banging on the boards. Uh, OG and Anobi is back. So, I think they're a better team without him because they play very fast and they don't give it to him on that wing so he can shoot that weird turning the lefty yeah jump shot i mean he's a good basketball player it never can take anything away from him but now that the ball is in jalen brunson's hands him making all the decisions they they play much faster and divincenzo is awesome i mean and then you got Hart on the team you basically got the villanova connection back with that team they're playing very good basketball and if i'm a betting man which i'm not but i would say that the knicks are going to catch the bucks for that two seed uh they trade them in the offseason they have a ton of draft picks a very good core they trade them in the offseason nah probably not probably not i mean like what you gonna get what you gonna get? You don't uh -oh. think a team out there? I mean, Randall's not a bad player. No, he's not a bad player. I mean, it's just I can't see a fit for somebody else out there for his salary. On the set, yeah, yeah. The salary is always the the kicker, and of course, when the Knicks do finally spend money, it's always to overpay to get a guy like him. Yeah, they, not really get a guy, but to retain him yeah. when he took off. When he because got there. like I, I kind of sound like I'm banging on him, but like. Hey, they wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for him. Like, guys like a Jalen Brunson wouldn't have come to New York if it wasn't for him. They wouldn't have been able to trade for OG and LB from Toronto if it wasn't for all the things that he did to get them to this place where, like, hey, man, the Knicks are respectable. Wait, the Knicks are good, like, to add pieces. All right, last one. All right, last one. All right, since this is the last one, let's talk about the Cavs. The Cavs have fallen to the sixth seed with a 46 and 33 record with three games remaining on the schedule. They play the Grizzlies, Pacers, and the Hornets. The Cavs are might find themselves in the playing game the way they've been playing. You get into the play in, you opt out like it's a bowl game or the <laughs> NIT. You get to the NIT, you opt out. Now, I can't confidently take that joke and act like it was my own. I saw that earlier today on Twitter by Axelrod. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. But if the Cavs, who at one point were the hottest team and the best team in the NBA heading into the All-Star break, to find themselves playing in the play-in game, potentially fire the head coach, and you got to figure something out. But, you you know, this is the thing, Cleveland. You can't complain about Donovan Mitchell not wanting to re-sign with your team when you're a play-in team with them, when you have such a good core nucleus. Like, this is unacceptable. There's too talented of a team to be flirting with the play-in at this point, especially for an East that I know Boston's, like, top-notch. But the East, I mean, they, they could easily, if they were playing their best basketball, they were before the All-Star break, they could be right there with Boston as the top two teams in the East heading into the playoffs. And right now they're just battling to get into the play Not battling. They're battling to stay out of the play-in. I just think... Not playing your best basketball at the most important time of the season. Absolutely. Removing the Celtics because the Celtics are like 62 wins. They're far ahead of everybody else. But it seems like the Knicks and the Magic are the only two teams that really want to get this two seed. And they have a chance to get it. Like I said before, it's only three games left. The season ends on Sunday, and then the play-in tournament starts on that Tuesday. All right, Ken and Kev's show, 1410 ESPN Radio. That wraps it up for us on Chatterbox. We still have another hour to go on radio. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us uh, on Chatterbox, of course. And uh, we're off tomorrow on Chatterbox. Tomorrow's your birthday. It is. It is. And then it is. Where's my bell? I'm going to need to ring this bell because I'm getting old. <laughs> so you're, it'll be your birthday tomorrow, and you're off Friday. Yeah, And yeah. I'm flying the plane solo on Friday on Chatterbox and Wing. So uh, there you go. i got to talk to Trace. I might go set up in Hamilton. Nice. I might go set up in Hamilton and check out the studio. I've never done the show from the stu uh, studio before. Make sure you follow me at one Kev Nash on Instagram and on Twitter and obviously the uh, Facebook page for the show because I'm going to Ohio State Spring Game on Saturday, taking a whole bunch of pictures and videos. So, you know, I'm sure everybody's going to be listening or watching it, but hey, I'm going to have exclusive access. I might get some field access. I got some people up there. Yeah, in Dayton, too, you can listen to the spring game here on 1410 Wing AM. If you're looking to watch it, it's not on the Big Ten Network this year. It's on uh, our friends over at Fox. Oh, oh. Yeah. Herb's uh, going to be there. Herb's going to be on the call. Herbs. What about Herbs? The guy Herbs. Aye, aye, aye. Maybe I'll tell him how much I like him. Mm. 
I, I like Urban. I, I, like, I, I, I know you do. I'm a big Urban fan. I know you do. I like winners. <laughs> I like winners. Since he left, the other guy hadn't won a whole lot of meaningful games. I'm just knowing it out there. <laughs> Kenner and Cal, 1410 ESPN Radio and Chatterbox Sports. We'll be right back.